We talk about that. And today we will talk, inshallah, about illegal gains. In Islam, it's, alhamdulillah, it's lawful to gain money, gain property, gain anything, but legally, lawfully, go work, buy and sell. But to illegally asking people gains, it's called al-makas in Arabic. Al-makas. For example, illegal taxes. To me, sorry to tell you, this three, six percent SST is all illegal, especially in food. In food and daruri of life, what is, what is in life daruri, like rice, water, gas, uh, this one, electricity. There shouldn't be SST at all. Other things, maybe. You can do uh, on luxurious things. Chocolate coming from Belgium. But rice coming from the petty field, you say three, uh, 6%. Rich people, if they bring Lamborghini, but not somebody b buying my V. Somebody using LRT, MRT, and you put 6% on him, in 100 ringgit, you take 6 ringgit fr away from him. What is this? He's already poor. That's why he's using the LRT and MRT, public transport. So, actually, Islamically, we need to know that these things are not uh, really legal in Islam. According to the laws of Islam, I'm not talking about the laws of the civil laws made by humans. I'm talking about God-given laws, which should be more respected than human-made laws. Huh? <coughs> toll. Toll. Plaza toll. You paid to pass the road. Sin. You come to the Sheikh, Sheikh Zubair, and you committed a sin. And because I'm listening to you, you have to pay me. Who did that? And still doing it? Christians. Christians. Very good. You pay money for sinning. The Shia do that too. Uh, somebody showed me a passport where Muqtada Sadr of Iraq is giving them already visa to paradise. Jannah, Jannah, straight. By Muqtada Sadr. Muqtada Sadr is a cleric, Shia cleric, famous Shia cleric in, uh, if you are one of his followers, he already stamps on your passport. <laughs> Not, no jokes, it's serious. So we need passport to go. Huh? We need passport. Yes. <coughs> Make sure when they, they cuff on you. <laughs> yes, put it plastic because it get wet. <laughs> but it's real the Christians do that the Christians if you sin you come to him and you tell him what you did and he will say pay a certain ad. that's all illegal, illegal gains today illegal gains like somebody making dua for your loved one who is sick and then he asks he charges you what is he sick with? Oh, cancer. Oh, cancer is 1,000 ringgit. <laughs> Flu like uh, my dear brother, uh, Dr. Uh, only 200. <laughs> and because of your wife, I give discount. Takbir. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. These are, uh, and this is happening. That is a major sin in Islam. You are gaining money out of the pain of others. Now, if people freely from their heart want to be generous to you, it's up to them. But no, you charge for me to come to the house to read, to read for you dua, dua ushifa. Na'udhu billah. Let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this. In Surah al-Shura, verse Surah 42, verse 42. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَظْلِمُونَ النَّاسَ وَيَبْغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Let's see the English. Sister Shamin, the English. The way of blame is only against those who oppress men and wrongly rebel in the earth. For such there will be a painful torment. The, ta the tax collector is one of the closest supporters of the oppressors. Rather he may be of the oppressors. This is why when Islam came, it abolishes taxes. But in introduced zakat. And zakat is 2.5%. While the tax look at it. And uh, the tax, everybody is same. same. You have to pay whether you are rich or not. For, for the zakat, no, only those who are rich should pay. Those who have. And that's fair. And that goes, actually, with logic, even. Those who have pay. Those who don't take. No, a tax collector doesn't care. You are a citizen. You live in this land, you pay. Nottingham Forest. So we need, we need Robin Hood. Takbir. So hence, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared. Hence, the Prophet declared the tax collector will not dread paradise. Forget it, tax collectors. Al uh, HDN. Let's first talk about tax. Then, then we go see what type of illegal gains are happening today in our time. Because every time we are coming up with new ways of collecting money through illegal ways. Like uh, Al-Makas. So toll plaza. Do you know in some countries, you travel east, west, north, and there actually there is no tax? Because you're already paying the road tax. tax. And with it, they should fix the roads, and with it, they may turn. But here, because most of them are private, yeah. they are sold to tanceries, that's why you end up you just paid, and then you enter another exit, you end up paying, and then Allahu Akbar. And that's with time, go see how much money you paid, with time. Over six, seven, ten years, see how much you have paid. Sheikh, but how can we maintain? How can you maintain? There are other ways. Now you, st you see, you are so much brainwashed that you start defending the, your oppressors. That even those who oppress you, instead of standing up against them, you stand for them. For example, for example, a lot is oppressing us. And I'm saying, you shouldn't do that. I'm expecting lot to speak. It's Muhammad who defends him. And Muhammad is more abused than me. I say, brother, lot, increase now. Increase the tax level. Because I'm trying to defend him. And instead of at least be quiet, try to understand what's going on. He says, but Sheikh, oh, how to, how does Lot maintain the, oh man. And this is happening. We are so much brainwashed that subhanAllah, those who are defending us, we turn against them. Okay. So Allah said the way of blame is only against those who oppress men and wrongly rebel in the earth. Translated by the ulama as those who are overtaxing people. We understand there should be tax, but on those who have, and even those who have, you don't tax them more than, than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. La ilaha illallah. So the Prophet sallallahu said, the tax collector will not enter paradise. Uh, all, no, usually tax collectors are people who are sent by someone and really do the dirty job. It's the job, let the leader himself come and do it since he wants it. No, he sends you. He sends you to do it for them. Be careful, my brothers and sisters. So this, this is the, the big boss, boss Kabir, or the, the guy who collects? Anyone. Anyone who works for them. Yes. You have to be careful. 
No, I'm not saying NHDN is bad. I'm saying some of their practices is wrong. It must be removed. This is why there is so much injustice. Because injustice is not just putting you in jail. Injustice is overtaxing you. And to me, it's a form of hasad that someone has money and you go after him. Someone, Allah blessed him, and he's legally working. Oh, because if it was not Malaysia, he would, who said that? Maybe if he's in another country, he makes more money. Sure, but the mega rich don't pay tax. Who? Oh? <laughs> you know how to evade tax. They have ha, uh, outside accounts and all that. Uh, okay, that's their problem. Because if, if it was zakat, they would have paid it. But because it's too much, they run away from it. They evade it. And they used all tricks of auditing. No, I am saying that in Islam, Muslim, I'm not talking about non-Muslim. Non-Muslim must pay ta another tax called jizya. Muslim, Muslim, whether rich or not, 2.5% is more than enough. Allah, he says, you can run a government budget with 2.5%. But everybody pays. Whoever has the minimum, nisab. Now, of course someone will run away from 29%. If you give him 2.5%, he would rather pay the 2.5%. They will run away from 29%. Very few people will pay 29%. Uh, uh, jizya, different rate. jizya is up to the government, yes. <laughs> different rate, yes. Can, but can be six. Can. Can be, can be more. Can be more, yes. Can be more. Anyways, uh, what's the reason why the tax collector will enter, hell, uh, will enter hell and therefore not enter paradise? Look at it, because... Ah. You, because you, you are a tool, you are being used by the oppressors to collect money. Continue. The consumption of haram is of two kinds. One, taking another's property through oppression, such as in cases of treachery and robbery. Two, taking others' property through unlawful forms of sports and games, such as gambling and the lottery. Ah. I can take your money illegally by forcing you, putting a knife here and say, give me the money. <clears throat> Robbing you. Right? There is another form. We play a game. And I win over you. Game of chance. That is unfair. It's not like you sweated. Huh? And you did a service to me, labor, and I didn't give you money. No, you play the game with me and you won. Cards, poker, gambling, all forms of gambling. That's also taking money. That's why, careful, some of you ask me about sports. Sheikh, can we play a game and put money and one of us takes it? That is gambling. You cannot do that. So please understand, winning over someone in sports, it's a, a form of illegal gain. It's an illegal gain. Example, I bring rooster versus rooster. If my rooster wins, I take the money. They call it sport, and that's not even sport. I bring my dog versus your dog. They fight. Whoever wins, take the other one. Now, that's actually... You are the dog, not them. You're so cruel. Look at it. You, you find pleasure... And you are willing to take money for, for a dog suffering many wounds and many death and may, maybe death. And they put money, as my brother said, they to register all that wrong. You are, pay, you are putting money to use the gym, that's different. You're paying fees to use the, tool, the tools. That's different than I go with you to run. And usually when you run, only men run. Only men run? No. You women, wherever we are going, you're going with us. You see us going to hell, you still want to jump first. No. Please understand, the issue of tax collecting, if you work for somebody oppressive, you cannot do that. 
Continue. So there are, there are many ways of taking someone's property with haram. By oppression, such as treachery, you, you commit treason against someone and take his money. Or you rob his money, you rob him, or you steal his money. And there is another way, the, uh, unlawful forms of sports. A sport that is not, Allah didn't allow you to b put money on. The only sport that you can really uh, uh, put on is hoofs that have like, like um, camel, camel. The camels have the hoofs that there is something in between. But not horses, horse riding. I bet on number one, you bet on number two. Because the hoof is complete. The other hoof, which is like this, there is space in between. Rasulullah Sassim said, no problem. Other than that, clear? Continue, sister. The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Slars. Some people spend Allah's wealth, that is the Muslim's wealth, in an unjust manner. Such people will be put in the hell, put in hell on the day of judgment. Yes. Example. Some people spend Allah's wealth. Allah's wealth means people's property, meaning the like your ra'yat money. One MDB, the funds, the, 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 the funds of the nation. They spend them not in the right way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put them in hellfire. Because look, if you don't even spend your own money properly, your own money that you sweated for, you are extravagant, let's say. You worked so many years, in one year you deplete everything. Is that good? You will be asked Yawm al-Qiyamah about it. You are very extravagant. Okay, for example, you worked very hard, but at night you went to gamble. You will be asked or not? How about the property of other people? You are interested to look after? That's even worse. You are not allowed to even misuse your money. Your own money that Allah gave you. How about misusing the money of the ra'yat? Our leaders need to hear this hadith. If they really mean to meet Allah while he's pleased with them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, narrate this hadith back. Some people spend Allah's wealth, meaning the Muslims' wealth, in an unjust manner, like the rulers of Saudi Arabia today. The Aramco, they want to sell it. That's the money of the Saudi people. Algerian oil and gas, Malaysian palm oil and the tin or timber, whatever Allah gave you. No one has the right to misuse those funds. If you do so, such people will be put in hell on the day of judgment, Rasulullah Sassim said. Your own money, you are not allowed to misuse it, let alone somebody else's money. Yes. Anas radiallahu anhu. Anas radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet, Oh Messenger of Allah, supplicate Allah for me to make my dua acceptable. Amen. Nice. To, Anas, to have an acceptable du'a, you should eat only the halal, lawful, since a person may be deprived of his du'a being answered for 40 days because of eating a mouthful of haram food. Hi, hi. Look at this hadith, look at this hadith. Listen to me. <laughs> Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, make du'a to Allah that my du'a will be answered. Whenever I make du'a, Allah will answer me. So that's a wonderful thing, right? You go to the Prophet and tell him, O Messenger of Allah, you are the most beloved to God. Ask him to never turn me down when I ask him. Rasulullah Sallallahu looked at Anas and said, Anas, there is a requirement for that. If you ever just take a bite of haram, your dua will not be accepted for 40 days. Just a bite. How about if you live in the haram? Rashwa, theft, bribery a lot, theft, this, this, this. Allah will never answer because you have a lot until you die. 
Imagine somebody takes a little sugar, a theft, for 40 days. His dua will not be answered. Oh my God, 40 days, 40 days. You took a bite, which is not halal for you. You took it without the permission of someone. I'm not saying you're eating pork. You're eating halal chicken, but it, was, it, it wasn't given to you. You have, you, you like children steal from each other in school. Ah, 40 days, no du dua not answered. So Rasulullah corrected Anas, since Anas was too close to him, so he corrected him. Anas, whether I make dua for you or not, it's not going to happen unless you eat halal. Unless you eat halal. Now, it doesn't mean halal. I'm a sheikh, I'm eating uh, chicken slaughtered by Muslim. The money I bought, uh, the money was given to me from uh, bribery or from uh, stealing, na'udhu billah. That's why the, con uh, the, the idea of halal, my brothers and sisters, we, we get it a little bit wrong here, distorted in Malaysia. When they tell you this product is halal. But the whole business is sponsored by bank. The guy who is selling halal to you, when you ask him, brother, this business, did you put it with your own sweat cash, 100%? Or did you borrow money from the bank? He said, no, I borrow. Okay, the bank, does it charge you interest? He said, of course. So whatever you sell, sorry, is? Yeah. That's why, my brothers and sisters, the first thing you need to do is to halalize your income. Please do that. This class, this class, the best thing we can benefit from all these classes that Sheikh Zuber is doing with you, inshallah, is if you cannot halalize your income and stop the riba, you're not going anywhere. That's because that's the practice of the ilm. You just need little courage. Wallahi al-Azim, Allah will help you. He knows. If he knows you are sincere, he will help you. Don't do anything, brothers and sisters, now. Except that it's 100%. Sheikh, what to do? If you, if let's say, I borrowed money to buy a house. Sheikh Zubair borrowed money. May Allah forgive me. Let's say, long time ago. Now I'm making tawbah. I'm a student. I'm learning the deen. I still have 15 years to go, to finish, or 20 years. If we follow the calendar of the bank. I will cut it to half. Then to quarter. Then, then. Any income that Allah gives me, I give to the bank. And even if they give me fees, fees, fines, penalty. penalty, no problem, I pay it. But get rid of the riba. Some of you did it, alhamdulillah, I'm very proud of you. I know some sisters and brothers who, alhamdulillah, no more riba in their life. And they say, Sheikh, wallahi al-adhim, now, now we see the barak. <coughs> Before, no barak. <coughs> even the marriage breaks, even the children not listening to their parents. Now they, are, they made a choice. You gonna die or not? Look at them. You gonna die or not? Yes. Very good. You better die without money. Look, look. I rather die without money than with a lot of money which I leave after me, but I am going to be questioned for it. So I, rad I rather not take anything. I, I, did I didn't leave money for my kids, but I'm not going to be questioned. <coughs> no, I left a lot of money, but I will be questioned. Why not them questioned? No, they, they, they inherit you. That is the riba. That's the danger of riba. So inshallah, my sisters and brothers, try to do that. Try to, if, the, if you have a business, try inshallah to halalize it. If you have a house, <coughs> halalize it. If you have a car, halalize it. There is no point you have some money in the bank account while there is still riba. Pay, pay the riba at least. Get rid of May Allah help you. Allah al -Adim, I, I've seen brothers who change and alhamdulillah, they are, they're living better than before. Okay? Good. Continue, sister. Allah has decreed your behavior as he has decreed your provision. Mm. Surely Allah grants the joys of this world to those whom he loves and those whom he loves not. But he does not grant religion except to those whom he loves. Therefore, those who are blessed with religion receive Allah's love. Like you. Do you understand you are really blessed? If Allah doesn't love you, He will not give you a seat in my class. You need to know this. 
If Allah doesn't love me, he will not bring me to teach this. I have no doubt that Allah loves me and loves you. Say Amen. Amen. Because Allah loves us. <coughs> look, look. Dunya, Allah, he gives to whom he loves and those <coughs> whom he don't love. Aren't many Japanese very rich? Are they Muslims? Do, they, do Allah love them? No. If you are kafir, Allah will not love you. Trump, isn't he rich? Yes. Do you think Allah loves that man? No. He's arrogant. He's arrogant even by the American standard, let alone Islamic standard. You understand? Yes. And he gives dunya to also whom he loves. Muslim, there are many good Muslims, alhamdulillah, like you, quite, quite okay financially, alhamdulillah. But the religion he will not give except to whom he loves. So if you see yourself in the religion, praying in the masjid, going to classes like this, attending Umrah, Sadaqah, Alhamdulillah, your life is quite, Alhamdulillah, close to Allah. Then Allah loves you. Remember that. Continue. Therefore, those who are blessed with religion. No, repeat. Therefore, the sentence before it. Okay. Assuredly, no one earns haram money, but what he spends, gives as charity, or leaves behind, will be his fuel in the hellfire. Whatever you earn from haram, whether you spend it or not, will be your fuel in, in Jahannam. Because it came from haram. It came from a source Allah doesn't agree with. But look, little bit from my sweat, little. I got five ringgit. But I sweated for it. I, I, I clean tables in a restaurant. I mop the floor. And people give me 20 ringgit. That is to Allah. Is better than 200 million coming from haram. But you don't understand. You will understand after death. Now you think, no, Sheikh, look, 20 ringgit. It doesn't even buy me nasi lama for my kids. It will. The other 200, na'udhu billah, will buy you even a yacht. So that you drown in the sea. But after death, you will see the difference. Go ahead. Verily, Allah does not obliterate evil by means of evil, hmm. but He obliterates evil by means of good. Very good. Allah will not erase evil with evil. Allah will erase evil with good. You have to bring water to extinguish fire. You bring fire with fire, oh, it even becomes worse. Somebody didn't smile at you, smile. <coughs> Somebody didn't visit you, go visit. Don't say, he did to me this. And enemies of Islam, but not a Muslim like you and me. It's nice. Said, it is far better for one to put dirt into his mouth than to put something on unlawful into Allahu Akbar. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi better put stone, dirt, tana, than to put something haram. Because haram will turn fire Yom Al-Qiyamah. Tana will not. Meaning you rather eat uh, Tana than you eat something haram. Don't steal. Don't, don't put in your mouth. Okay, okay, okay. You don't care about yourself. Do you, don't you care about your kids? Okay, you don't care about yourself. But when you bring that haram to your kids, do you truly love your kids? Honestly, do you really love that woman who she's sharing everything with you? Faithful, waiting for you, uh, sabr on all your mistakes. You really, Allah, you don't care. Because a good father will never bring haram to his children. He may eat it. He, he. Na'udhu billah. But he will not put that in the mouth of his kids. If he does that, it means he is irresponsible. Yom al-Qiyamah, they, they will not uh, enter hell because of him. But that's what he's doing. Hmm. That's why great women, what do they do? Great wives. They, every morning when the husband is going to earn bread, she tells him, fear Allah in us. We will be fine without a lot of money. Because temptation, especially if he works uh, in office or this, a lot of people will uh, tempt him. Come on, brother, you have kids in university. Here is, uh, look, look at this yellow, yellow envelope is for you. Halal, wallahi, hal hadiyah, hadiyah. Hadiya, <laughs> Hadiya, why are you giving it to me under the table? <laughs> Hadiya under the table. <coughs> Takbir. 
Now, Hadi, you are not under table. Give me your account in Hong Kong. Give me your account overseas. Be careful of Hadi, Hadi, Hadi. And Hadi, you bring it to me to the office. And was it not for my stars here or for the hat? Um, uh, you bring me any hadiyya? Yeah, be careful. Anybody? Anybody that is nourished by unlawful food will never enter paradise. In another hadith, anybody nourished by non halal food, a naru awla bih, fire will take it. Na'udhu billah. May Allah save us. So please understand, my sisters, brothers. No illegal gains. There is an, an, uh, an illegal gain that sister mentioned, which is the parking. They come and they say, uh, I've been uh, looking after your, this is so common now in Algeria. Street, you never see them there. You park your car. When you are leaving, he comes with a yellow jacket uh, and with a stick. Mister, what do you want? Uh, uh, parking. 50 dinar, 50 dinar. 50 dinar, uh, little. Had it not been for these guests, you see Taekwondo, <laughs> Takbir. <laughs> Sometimes it's just because you have guests, you know what I mean? You are not here, mister, at all. So tomorrow, Sheikh Zubair also will take a neighborhood. My brother there, steak, I am steak, red. Yalla. Do you have this problem here? Yeah. Yeah. Some people do that, especially uh, sport, sport occasions. Yeah. Yeah. That, is, uh, that is really not right. But Sheikh, it's better than they go still. Uh, uh, see, you are defending them again. <laughs> you see. Why not go work? Why, why always better than... than uh, yeah, why not... Uh, Sheikh, you're right, they should go work. They should go sell ice cream, for example. No problem. They will never go work and get a decent uh, life. Sheikh, in that situation, <coughs> you know, the, the taker definitely will get to trouble. How, what is the status of the giver? If you reda, if you reda and give, you are exactly like him. You should not reda. That you are contributing to yes, I, but I told him I am helping you. I'm giving you this not because I'm afraid of you or because you think you are smart. I'm, I'm giving you this as a help. Different ruling, but not yeah, but little. I didn't give him uh, the whole. Uh, no, because uh, halas, look, look. People will always try to abuse you, but if you let them abuse you, you are equal. Sometimes you give because you know, you're afraid they may scratch your car. Yeah. Then don't take the most expensive car. Yeah. <laughs> take the one that is very already scratched. Even him, when he sees it, he will uh, paint it for you. <laughs> most of you drive very luxurious cars to this. Uh, no, take a, the one that look, only the engine is okay. <laughs> huh? Only one car? <laughs> Buy another one. No money. A little, little. Little. Women have a lot of money. Just ask her for some help. Say, my dear wife, say one ring or two will buy us one. And you go, you and your wife, old car. Uh, not old, um, but people, when they see, they say, ma, this man has nothing. Leave him alone. But you are the richest guy, actually. Ay, 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 ay. Anyways. I am just joking. Yes. They are scratch. No, when they scratch it, you scratch it more. Then they, they realize. Scratching is all right. They might puncture it. I know. I know. I know. No, of course. You, you reject only if you are strong. If you are not strong, you better not. Because these people are on drugs. Yeah. Yes, Ibrahim. For example, an individual obtained some funds from illegal gang. MashaAllah, Takbir. <laughs> and suddenly his name was 2017, became 2019, 2020. My question is, now that money is tainted 
and it's all mixed up with other people's... Does it taint it? Yeah. I, I, no. Alhamdulillah. Don't worry. The money that is haram, if mixed with others, it will not. Only him. Allah is so merciful. Allah is so merciful. <coughs> Good question. <coughs>